Good morning, brethren. Today is March the 20th, 2018, and I am coming on in obedience. Father wants me to speak a crucial word, uh, words of encouragement and words of obedience um, within the body of Christ. So I pray that this blesses you today. I want to start by giving all praise and glory to Father Yahweh, Yahuwah, our Mashiach, Yahushua, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, for imparting wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, brethren, I know that this is a, a really exciting time for us in prophecy as we are all just eagerly awaiting for the Lord to come for us. And these are key um and crucial points that Father wants me to um, read to the church. So it's very important that you stay tuned to the entire word. Um, it's very important that you take to the pin message. I'm going to include specifics in there uh, regarding verses and a link, uh, Sister Barbara's channel, a video, a specific, a very specific video that we need to take heed to. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, we want to remind ourselves to remain obedient, to crucify the flesh, but very important as priests on the wall. It is very important for us priests, as written in Micah, it is important for us to keep knowledge on our lips. Knowledge on our lips, that is Father's instruction. And it's most important for us not only to keep this <clears throat> as we are the mouthpiece for the Lord, so that's very important that he wants me to bring up. Another thing is um, we must align what we are speaking forth with the living word. We must align it. Before speaking a word, Father is asking that we con uh, counsel with him directly. If you're going to speak out a word and you are led by the Spirit to do so, be sure to counsel with Father in order to confirm that it is the time to speak that word. That's very important that we do this in obedience. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started um, what Father wants me to bring up. So yesterday, Father had me speak on the equinoxes. That is plural. There's two. To point out that they occur twice a year. One is in March and the other in September. Many of us are awaiting this equinox today, March the 20th. One is called vernal and the other autumnal. Now, Father has had me reiterate certain prophecies must come to pass first, as written thoroughly in Matthew 24 and Revelation 1 through 6, before, before, excuse me, before the first fruits are plucked from the earth. So it's very important that we heed these. In a word granted to God's healer, Seven Channel, Sister Barbara and Brother Dan, uh, this was just here recently. It is entitled, These are the events that will allow the beast to come to power, citizens disarmed, civil war. This aligns with what he has stressed to others as well in the body of Christ, such as Sister Mary with God's Handmaiden's channel. And through my podium, he has continually instructed for us to prepare our households because what is contained in the living word in Matthew 24 and Revelation 1 through 6. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over and play um, this crucial video. Please hear. Should be killed. Okay, look at You're it. up. I've already got the hair standing up on me. This is really strong. Now, Brother Dan was mentioning to me somewhere that this is already starting to happen. So, children, I have told you many times to be prepared. My messengers and prophets have warned you over and over. You are not listening. Your family depends on you. Husbands, you are the head of the family. I put you in this specific position for this appointed time. I see you relaxing, not understanding the danger coming. Your family needs to have an emergency plan. You need to make arrangements to stay in contact when communication sources are shut down. The government will not protect you. They will halt all efforts to arm yourself as your forefathers put forth in written rules and documents. The authorities have their weapons, have their orders. Guards will be placed in every town 
Their war weapons have been prepared and stored in places not visible to the countrymen. Man will be fighting men. Many towns and cities will be burned. Don't continue to be naive. Get up and get prepared. The banking institutions take direct orders from your government. You will be denied access to my, any funds. There will be food and sh food shortages and large companies will close. You will not be able to travel. There will be travel ban for everyone. You will need your identification. You may be shut up in your home. A curfew will be in place. All dissidents will be taken to a special housing area already prepared for them. They will be confined in groups. Families will be separated. Women and children will be taken to different camps. Man will be fighting man. Your towns and cities will be burned and destroyed. This is the event that will allow the beast to take control. Have you listened? These are the days John at Patmos described in the scroll I instructed him to write. To reveal the truth for the latter days, prepare before the beast comes to power. He who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit says. Wow. Okay, so that is the word that Father wanted us to hear with spiritual ears. Those who have an ear, please hear what the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is revealing to the church. This is crucial. This is very crucial, and it aligns with Scripture as well. Again, mindfully look at Matthew 24 and Revelation 1 through 6. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the word here. Uh, I apologize if there's any background noise because I, it's just myself um, with the um, with my grandbaby. Okay, so then we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 53 in the King James Version. And these are scriptures that Father has hand-selected for me to speak out in front of the church. So this is very important. This isn't something that I've just come up with. This is very crucial to this word. He wants to give us encouragement that indeed... Uh, he is coming for us, but we need to pay mindful attention to aligning it with the living water. So behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Please uh, make a note, a very crucial note. The Feast of Trumpets is observed notably around the autumnal equinox. Okay, now I'm not setting dates, but I'm giving you what aligns with the living word. These things must come to pass. And then the Feast of Trumpets, of course, happens during the autumnal uh, equinox. So in Revelation uh, chapter 7, uh, Father wants us to pay mindful attention to these details. And after these things, okay, after these things being crucial, keep in mind, we are already past Revelation 1 through 6. Um, and it says, and after these things, um, excuse me, just one moment. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants. Um, excuse me, hold on. I'm trying to juggle the baby here. I've had to record this at least four times now. I apologize. Um, hold on. Just got to set her up here with cartoons. Okay, so. Um, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till until we 
excuse me, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then I'm going to um, restart on, on uh, verse 9, okay? So I read up until 4, now until 9. These are crucial parts that Father wants us to pay attention to. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds, and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around, about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. And all the angels stood around about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor. Uh, give me just one moment. Um, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Please pay mindful attention to this part. It's amazing. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest? And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun lie on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, also in reference to um, the the first fruits, okay, which is the 144,000. Why does the Bible say the 144,000 were offered as fruits? Well, while most will have to be purified or refined by the great tribulation, the 144,000 were mature or ready before the great tribulation started. Key words, before the great tribulation started, as we are not appointed to wrath the great tribulation. However, we must pay mindful attention to what must happen in Matthew 24 and in Revelation 1 through 6. It is clearly written. And then I'm going to continue. These were therefore redeemed and offered as first fruits to God. This is straight out of the written and living word. First fruits refers to the first portion of the harvest, which is given to God. Most notably, the first fruits are the first to come in time, those who made themselves ready. It can signify with a pledge or hope of the greater harvest to follow, an offering. Now, yes, we do know that um, that um, the Lord is the Passover lamb. He is the Passover. Okay, so we do know that, and he, he was um, the first fruits to Father. Okay, so... We also want to keep in mind that there was a um, there was a great earthquake when our Savior was crucified. So uh, you never know that great earthquake could happen. You know, over Passover, we don't know, but we we can see the parallels is what I'm getting to. Um, and then furthermore, on the 144,000, they will sing a song before the throne that was known only to them. It was known only to them. And what's amazing is in the following um, in the following verses that I'm going to read from, this is how merciful Father is. He sends an angel to warn the inhabitants of the earth. Listen closely to this. In Revelation 14, chapter, uh, excuse me, chapter 14, verse 8 through 13. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented 
with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints, those who had not made themselves ready. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. From henceforth. So what he's saying is, from here on out, my angel, I've, I've allowed my angel to speak forth to the inhabitants of the earth. And this angel has warned that if you take the mark of the beast, you will not have no sleep nor day nor night. Okay? But he's giving the warning, do not take it. And then on top of that, he says, um, let me read again. Pay attention to mindful detail here. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, from now on. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And then in Revelation chapter 15, verse 3, And they sing a song of Moses. This is amazing because I overlooked this. So this is a beautiful revelation right here. The song that the 144,000 learn. Listen clearly. Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Hold on just one moment. Here, Mama. Here, go ahead. Go out of the bathroom. Okay, so this concludes. Um, I apologize. This concludes to what Father has had me speak today um, so that we understand, yes, we are to stay mindfully um, watchful of the season. We absolutely are in the season, but we want to keep in mind always that we have to reference the written word. And the written word and his servants are saying, please be prepared. Prepare your households. I pray that this has blessed you, and please, I will add this in the pin message for you to align with Scripture, okay? And I just want to say that I love you all, and I pray again that this has blessed you. Amen.